Ooh. Hey, what's going on there, YouTube? I am back once again. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the box mod build I posted a few days ago. In addition, hopefully, it helped you all out uh, for those that are wanting uh, to build their own box mods. So, uh, a lot of you have. Uh, commented on the videos on the box mod videos for me to use a MOSFET on my box mod builds so I went ahead and did it uh, basically since I'll be giving this box mod away you know I decided to put one in there so there'll be no worries when it comes to the non-rated switch uh, so everyone will be happy. Uh, so as far as the parts uh, I use to uh, put a MOSFET in the boss mod, first thing you'll need is obviously the MOSFET. Uh, I purchased the parts. There will be two parts you'll need. Uh, I purchased the MOSFET and the resistor that I used uh, from Newark.com. They're based out of New Jersey. They're kind of one of the uh, other big electronic parts stores in the U.S. Uh, the other one is uh, Mauser. Uh, but since uh, Newark, again, they're from New Jersey, they're closer to North Carolina. I usually purchase from them because they it ships a lot faster. So. Again, this is the MOSFET right here. This is the IRLB3034 PBF and channel MOSFET. So, I will post the parts list in the description below. Uh, that it, that'll include the uh, part number part number you'll use to search for it. Uh, so, I paid. I think less than five dollars for this. I uh, picked up two, you know, just in case. You know, you, you never know if, uh, if something will happen. So I picked up two, so I have a spare. Uh, also, the other part you'll need is a 15k ohm resistor, right here. Uh, this is, I think it's about 20 cents each. So I picked up five of them. Uh, you know, once again to have spares. Uh, I'll show you a wiring diagram on how to wire this. Uh, when you look at the wiring diagram, basically you're, gonna, you're looking at the front of the MOSFET. So this is the front of the MOSFET. This is the back of the MOSFET. So when you're looking at the wiring diagram, when you wire this, you need to be looking from the front because there's going to be some labels each lead has you know different labels so let me show you the box mod first uh, you know I was gonna do a an actual tutorial on how to put it together but uh, since I wanted to keep the box mod clean you know I definitely took my time uh, so I didn't want to do that on video because I didn't want to bar bore you guys, uh, you know, because if I make a mistake, uh, I usually redo things over. So I didn't want to put that on video. So let me show you the box. Here it is right here. Uh, you know, I had to do a little bit of modification to uh, this box mod when I put the MOSFET in because again there's this, you know you're gonna be connecting to the MOSFET so in this before the negative goes all the way up to the negative on the 510 connector but now it goes to the MOSFET as you can see there and that is the source yep I will show you the wiring diagram don't worry uh, that's the source the middle one is your drain which now goes to the negative 
on the 510 connector, basically the negative washer right there. And then the last lead goes to the switch. And then the other connection on the switch goes to the positive wire, which comes from your battery, goes to the positive connection on the 510, and that's where you would connect the other portion of the uh, switch. You can also, you know, you don't have to do it this way, this is just how I did it. You know, you can also hook this directly to there too. You know, you can have two wires coming out of the positive uh, connection on your 510. You can also do that. But since I used all 14 gauge wires, I wouldn't be able to fit two in there. So, also, again, I decided to use all 14 gauge solid copper wires for this build, but you don't have to. Basically, the only part where you'll need a heavy, heavier gauge wire, uh, I would recommend at least an 18 gauge or lower wires is your negative from your negative battery connection you'll need 14 gauge uh, heavier gauge wire there like I said at least 18 gauge and also this wire from your positive that goes all the way to the positive pin on your 510 connector the rest can be you can use a smaller gauge wire which are your you know, 22 24 gauge because again you have a MOSFET in there that's not going to be carrying a lot of load so basically you can use smaller gauge wire from the middle connection here which is your drain to the negative on the 510 and then the ground I think it's ground yep ground to the switch you can use a smaller gauge wire there also this little wire right here which is from your switch to the positive you can use a smaller gauge wire there but again for me I decided to use all 14 gauge also you can use uh, stranded wires you know if you if you don't want to do all these bends uh, just to make it easier to you know wire everything that's all up to you all right folks that's how it looks once again I try to keep it as clean as possible uh, and also you can see the resistor there that's the 15k resistor uh, that is soldered to the outer leads of the MOSFET basically the ground and the source nothing is connected to the middle connection or middle lead of the MOSFET so once again the resistor the 15k resistor is soldered onto the outer leads of the MOSFET right there and I also uh, use double bubble to secure the MOSFET inside the box. You can kind of see the double, not double bubble, the, uh, what the hell did I use? The uh, JB weld, I'm sorry. Uh, so that shouldn't go anywhere. All right, that's the box, yo. Oh, son of a bitch. And here's the wiring diagram. Once again, you know, if you want to use this wiring diagram, just pause the video and start wiring your box. So once again, the negative from your battery will be wired to the source. Once again, this is you're looking at the front of the MOSFET source and then the drain which is D right here will go to the negative of the 510 connector and then the ground 
will go to your switch and then the other part of the switch will go to the positive wire of the battery or you once again you can also solder it together up here and then work its way back to the switch but I decided to splice it into the positive wire from the battery to the Addy so so now you don't have to worry about using a non-rated switch you can even use a uh, you know a really small tactile switch which I also purchased from eBay right here it's kinda like your DNA or your HANA box mod switches right here this little tactile switch which I'll be using in another box mod build that I plan on doing sometime later basically I'm gonna use the 1590 G box which is smaller so that's later on and that's for me so there you have it folks uh, once again if you're gonna use this wiring diagram just pause the video and start soldering uh, just gonna give you some more tips on this uh, when you're soldering the your connections your wires to the MOSFET make sure you don't leave your soldering iron there for too long because you'll end up you might end up uh, burning up the MOSFET or damaging it so make sure uh, as far as how I set my soldering iron I have it set at 750 degrees because mine is adjustable so when I apply when I put the soldering iron on whatever I'm soldering it heats up uh, right away also I use flux I use a flux based basically that's this uh, uh, basically flux uh, what it'll do is uh, it'll distribute the heat evenly so the solder will flow much better uh, so I highly recommend when you're soldering for you guys to use flux I know some solders have flux in it already but that's just not enough uh, you know it's better to use like a flux base or a liquid flux uh, it's, it's much better I highly recommend it and as always after you solder something use uh, I use isopropyl alcohol to clean my connections you know I have uh, an acid brush you know just to remove the flux you know all the residue so as you can see there you know everything is somewhat shiny you know and as you can see here from the positive I have these bends right here basically since the 510 the fab daddy vapes connect uh, 510 connection or that connection 510 connector is spring loaded if you have a wire going straight down that spring loaded is no you know it's no longer spring loaded because you're not going to be able to uh, screw down your atomizer all the way down because again there's no room you know so that's why I did all these bends right here so you kind of have like a spring right here see there So that's why I did that bend there. So there you have it folks. This is the unregulated box mod with a MOSFET. Uh, so once again I will post the uh, parts list in the description below with the uh, part numbers so you can uh, look it up either at Newark or uh, man, get out of here or Mauser. So you can put a MOSFET in your unregulated box mod so you don't have to worry about uh, using a non-rated switch. So pretty much you can use uh, any kind of switch uh, because you have that MOSFET in there. So as promised, uh, 
I'll be giving away this box mod to one of you. Uh, so pretty much uh, this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, just comment in this video of why you want this box mod. So that's the only requirement. Uh, also just, you know, uh, that's it, you know, just comment why you want the box mod. And I will draw the winner on the 8th of November. So a lucky person will get this box mod. Yeah. So let's go have a vape. Uh, this, the build I have on here is I think a point one point one something. Let me check it out. Point one four. It's a dual coil build on the Dark Horse RDA clone from Fastec. Alright folks, uh, hopefully uh, this video will help you uh, build your next box mod with a MOSFET. And uh, once again, thank you for subscribing to my channel and definitely thank you for watching. Uh, so yeah, somebody will get this box mod in the next couple weeks. Uh, or actually, that's when I'll draw the winner uh, on the 8th of November. So, and I will do another video on that uh, to announce the winner. And also, yeah, that's it. Just to announce the winner. All right. Peace out.